Hello, and welcome to a special uh, Get In Tune. Um, this is a workshop today. I am here at the Mount Vernon Public Library in Mount Vernon, New York. I've um, been doing, I got five days of cartooning workshops I'm doing. Um, today is day three. We did a basic overall cartoon, um, you know, cartooning skills. Yesterday we focused on superheroes, and today we're going to focus on manga, but we're going to do some review. Now, um, hopefully you guys can hear me well. There's another event going to be starting soon at the library, which is going to deal with music. So hopefully none of these social media sites knock me off for copyright if they hear it or, and you guys can hear me. Um, so we're going to begin. We have some people, but I'm, I'm not going to be showing anyone, uh, you know, just for privacy reasons, but you will be able to see the screen that is behind me here. Hopefully you guys can make everything out. Um, and I'll be beginning in a moment. So let me just get started, do a quick introduction to everybody here. Um, so I'm Michael Gracia. Nice I'm a, nice to meet you guys. I'm a cartoonist. I'm an animator. I'm an educator. Uh, I do a lot of traveling and work with kids, adults, all the things to, uh, teach them about comics, animation, storytelling. Um, I do a lot of other stuff, social media, you know, you name it. You know, if it's, if it's kind of art and creative related, I kind of do it. Um, so, like I said in my intro over here to, to the audience, which by the way, audience, uh, those watching, I probably will not be taking questions because, excuse me, and my phone goes off. Um, from a guy I said I was doing this right at two o'clock. <laughs> I told him I'm busy from two to four today. Anyway, um, so yeah, I do a lot of traveling. I work with kids. I love to teach cartooning. I love to talk about all the stuff that I'm passionate about. All right. Um, so we're going to do some kind of basic overview of some cartooning skills, things that everyone kind of needs to know how to draw. All right. Um, and basically, I start with, with shapes. I start with a circle, uh, maybe a square, and a triangle. You can add a rectangle in there, but that's still kind of a square. So I think about those shapes, right? Um, and cartooning is about, uh, you know, combining shapes together, simplifying, maybe cutting into shapes to create people, to create, you know, backgrounds, whatever you need, you know, props and stuff. So just to do a quick cartoon character, if I take a circle and I use some more circles, maybe even ovals, which is just stretching a circle, right? Put some pupils in here, right? Maybe kind of a nose, which could be like I was making a circle. A smile, some ears, some hair, right? A rectangle, maybe another rectangle here, and I'll break it up with like a little capital letter T or something, some flat ovals, a triangle, or a curved line, and then I curve a rectangle, and I add a hand, and I got a little guy waving to you, right? Very, very simple stuff. If I wanted to do a superhero, so you can see how simplified this guy is. We know superheroes have muscles that are more detailed. But that is just understanding and drawing the shapes that make up the characters, right? And I'm keeping it very simple right now, just so you guys can understand it and, and see how I'm using these shapes, right? Before getting into any kind of details. All right, guys, you see that there? And now I got this super heroic guy just by changing my shapes. That's it. I mean, everything comes down to how we draw and how we put these shapes together, how we cut into them. You know, if I wanted to do like a, a little girl or something kind of cutesy like this, I'm going to probably puff out a cheek, right? And I'm going to give her big eyes, maybe. Maybe a cute little nose and a smile, right? Got a big ear, some eyebrows, and maybe I'll give her some bangs. So I'm just, you see how I'm just adding these shapes? This is all I'm doing. And, you know, right here, a 
couple lines down. I'll put her name there, and this one will come up and curve. And all right, so you see how I'm just doing these simple things here. Ooh, did I get a? Uh... Oh, the eraser's over here. Sorry. Um, and over here, just so you guys know, there are some books on here which we'll look out later. And you guys can look through if you want to get up real quick and look at them. Um, they are different things for comics. They have uh, they have some great stuff. Conversations with Charles Schultz is Charles Schultz created the Peanuts. Um, one of my favorite comics, Asterix. It's a European comic. A um, bunch of different ones here. Gorgeous work in here. Um, what else do we have that people I can know? bring some kids stuff up. Yeah, if you can. If you yeah, can, we have a kids section for comics and then there's children there. That'd be great. If you can get a few things kid friendly wise. Not a problem. Um, you know, we're talking about Mama here. So this is Mama Studio. But this is Mama Studio was a program. It still is, but now it's called Click Studio Paint. Um, so that's a how to how to use the software kind of thing. Right? So I can use these simple shapes to create animals too. I love drawing cartoon animals. All right. So just for an example here, if I use, I'm going to take that like uh, square and I'm going to kind of twist it here and kind of make like this, what a diamond shape, right? And maybe I'll use some eyes. Put a little primal nose in here, right? I'm going to make a cat. Very simple shape. What do I need for the ears? Triangles, right? I can curve them a bit. And now that they're there, I can kind of rough up the edges. Maybe I'll rope, I'll round this off here and give them kind of this rectangular body. Thin legs. Get a couple of lines in. Right? And now. And put the hand in. And I'll make him wavy too. It's just always a friendly pose to do. Right? And I can have the tail, figure out where the tail comes off the spine. So it'll kind of start coming off like right around here, kind of where the belly button would be. Right? And I'll just put it off to the side. And if you want to give him, you know, details of patches on the fur or whatever, you know, I could make it very, uh, more animal like I'll do a cat again but what if I just take it and now I put the body like this so now it could look like it's sleeping right look how a cat sleep tucks its paws underneath it's got its other foot here and the tail usually wraps around it. so if you study animals and their behavior and look at pictures of these characters and animals, whatever people, you will be able to, to, to draw them in the poses. Now, I have a cat. I watch my cat all the time. I know how cats move, right? And you're still copying. I'll give you a moment. I'll get a sip of water. Am I... Uh, for you guys over here, am I making this easy enough for you guys to understand? Yeah. All right, cool. If I go too fast or I get too complex <laughs> for for the age group, let me know. Yes. Sometimes I get very passionate when I'm talking. I just get into it, and uh, I, I forget <laughs> sometimes. So. All right. I'm going to erase. Can I erase now? Or? Awesome. Hold on. Oh, I'll wait a moment. No worries. Okay. What? She's done. She's done. She's done too. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Let me come over and take a quick look. I'll tell you. Oh. Yeah, both of you did really good. <laughs> I like that too. I always use it on the sketch. And sketching is good. It's important, the sketch. Very good. All right. So with that, 
I want to talk a little bit about manga today. Um, manga is just a, a blanket term for comics in Japan. That's really all it is. It's a, you know, people will refer to, um, you know, Japanese styles of comics in here as manga, but really, if you go to Japan, any comic is manga, just like any animation in Japan is anime. Okay? So just, I just want you guys to know that starting off. Um, so it's not a, a technically a specific style. To us, it's a specific style. Okay? To, to, um, to the American culture. Now, there's different types of anime, uh, not well, anime or manga, I'm going to use that word interchangeably, but I'm focusing on manga, which is print. Um, and I actually brought in a good book um, that you guys, this is from my personal collection, that you guys can, you know, probably get out, they probably have it here in the library. But it's manga from, uh, for beginner, everything you need to know to start right away by Christopher Hart. Chris Hart has a bunch of how to draw books. A lot of them are on manga and anime. And he breaks it down very easy uh, from body construction, facial features to, you know, motion, um, how to clothe a character. These are um, humanizing animals like anthropomorphizing. It's a big, it's a big thing in those type of uh, comics. Um, but what I want to start with is one of the more popular, it's very kid friendly. It's called Chibi Style. Now what Chibi Style is, is the cute cartoony anime or manga, you know, characters. And they all have like big heads, tiny body type of, type of look. So there's a rule kind of when you're drawing out, everything kind of has these little, you know, change a little bit, right? You can always kind of play around with the rules once you, once you understand them. But Chibi, in the beginning, right, is we're going to start with a circle for the head. And it could be big. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle right now. But what's interesting about uh, the Chibi characters is that the body to the bottom of the feet are the same size as the head. So they average around that size. So I'm going to just put a line down the bottom and kind of have an estimate of where the feet should go. Right? And when we draw this, and you can use this, you can use circle, you can change the shape. All the characters kind of have a cheek pushed out to the side, like I did with that little girl in the beginning. That usually tells the direction the character is looking, but it adds cuteness as well. So if I want the character to look in that direction, I'm going to come in. I'm going to puff out the cheek somewhere. All right. Now, in cartoon, and I didn't talk about this today, but I did show it yesterday. We talked about guidelines. Now, we have two guidelines when we draw a face. There's the line of symmetry, which divides the face in half. That's the one that goes down. And the one that goes across is the eye line. All right? The eye line obviously tells you where the eyes go. Now, a great thing to know is basically your cheek comes right after your eye. So if I cut, push out a cheek, I know that I've created basically an eye line right here. All right, you don't have to draw the line, but it's something to know. And what I like to do is think about how big do I want to make the eyes. So I might make two lines at the top, but I might just do two like this for now. And I'll erase, I'll modify, right? So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna curve right now. Over here. I want the I want it to have a curve here, and I kind of want it to have a slight curve down the bottom. Now there's lots of different eyes that you can draw when it comes to when it comes to anime, manga style. Um, I'm gonna use something that's very kind of classic, old school, very old school, going back to like the time of Astro Boy, which was in the 60s. Um, and just a little side note, most people think he's the first like anime 
technically he's the first animated TV series. There's stuff that came before him. All right. And now I'm going to use just some ovals right here. And inside those ovals, I can keep it very simple and add one highlight, which is just a circle up here, right? And then I color in that entire eye black, the rest of it black, or whatever color you want to use, right? Now, if you want to make this a girl, all you got to do is add some eyelashes. You can do that by putting a couple off the side here, maybe even some thick solids, and then maybe one down here and one up here. If you want it to be a boy, you can leave the eyelashes off. It's, it's simple like that. All right. Um, now, a lot of chibi, depending on the style, this style, sometimes they have noses, sometimes they don't. All right. Uh, I'm going to do no nose on this one right now. Okay. Now, what's interesting about drawing the mouth, because if I did the nose, it would fall right around here, but I'm not going to put the nose. So we're going to put the mouth a little lower, kind of halfway down. And what, what they do with the mouth is they tend to kind of break it up, and it's a little hard to see with the pencil. Um, but if I was to draw this, kind of how a mouth does this, you know, in our upper lip, we tend to leave that where they would meet in that little bump. Empty here. But if you want, you can just do a simple kind of smile. Keep it. Did you, did you bring over? I'm right over to okay. Okay. Oh, so we got Owl, love Owl. If you have a score, that's Pokemon. Now, Pokemon actually is a good um, example. Of the of the kid friendly stuff here, um, kid friendly com, uh, manga like the real kid. He doesn't even have to achieve. He could be a little, you know, drawn a little bit more, um, you know, sophisticatedly. What those are, uh, most of those type of books have like mural uh, morals. I was going to say murals, but morals, humor to it. If you want, you can sit over here. I'm gonna... Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to keep simple with the eyebrows as well. Eyebrows tend to be a little thicker towards the eye and get thinner as they go out. So, I might do somewhere to draw kind of a little circle. And that's a little thick. It's kind of grouchy on marks or cheeky, right? And I'm just going to do some quick eyes and keep it simple right now. Uh, the last thing, by the way, I'm going to do is the hair. All right. I'm going to put the ear right here. The ear falls between the the uh, where the nose and the mouth would be. So I'm going to put the ear like right here, and the inside of the ears kind of have this, kind of has like this number five feeling to it. You know, you can do that, or that's one way. You can go inside the other direction, kind of curve it out, and you know, it's it's lines, it's, it's observation. There's a lot, I'm keeping it as basic right now as possible. But the, uh, you have a question for me? What's your question? I like it very much. Um, I just keep it, I try to keep it as simple as possible though right now. Now, the body can be done a few different ways, but we're gonna keep it kind of like making a, a, a U shape, almost like making an oval. So I'm gonna kind of keep the body, keeping it small. I'm coming around with this kind of oval letter U shape here. And that this, this shape is gonna be very important. All right, because that shape is what we're going to use for the arms and legs. We're just going to thin it out a bit more. So, just as an example, I can come here, 
You see how I mean? Right here. The legs and the arms. Now, if you want to add fingers and feet, they're very tiny. They keep them very cute, right? So you're going to have one, two, three, four, and then the thumb, so wherever you want to put it. That's five. This is going to go one, two, three, four, four, five. And the feet could be little, like, triangular shapes that come off of here. All right? I'll just erase so you guys can see better. I haven't clothed the character yet, nor have I put um, hair on the character. We're going to wait a moment. I'll let you guys catch up. I'm going to take a sip of water again. All right. Now, when we close the character, I'm going to bring this chair over so I can sit for a moment, too. When we close the character, we got to think about what the character is. Number one, is it a boy or a girl? Is it a superhero? Is it a, you know, just a kid in regular clothes? Like a, like a Dennis the Menace type of thing, wearing overalls or something? Um, is it a businessman? Or, you know what I mean? You got to think about it. And then we're going to build the clothes off of that. All right? It's also going to dictate the kind of hair we're going to give it. But all this is done through shapes. Now, I'm going to make this kind of a regular guy wearing like a jacket. All right? He'll have a t shirt on, he'll have jeans on, and he'll have like sneakers or something, right? So. I want to think about, the first thing I want to think about for me is the jacket. How big, what kind of jacket. So if I was to just draw kind of a line down here, like it comes to the waist, right? And a line over here, a little kind of like box shape I'm making, right? You see that when I erase? How it's kind of, let me get up a little bit here and here. How it kind of looks like the clothing's being added to it. I can do the same thing over here with the bottom of the, you know, the sleeves of the jacket. Right. Now, if I wanted to add a collar to the jacket, I'll decide on the type of collar. I'm going to kind of keep it kind of straight like this more modern style here, right? I can even add a pocket into the side if I want to. All right, if I want to, let's say he's in a t-shirt, right? All I need to do is make a little like letter U right here, you know, a little curved line to show that he's wearing a t-shirt. Now, do I want this, do I want his shirt tucked in? Would he be wearing pants with a belt? Would this, do I want his shirt, you know, hanging down and untucked like I'm wearing right now? You know, so that's what you got to think about. So if I want to put him in a belt, I'm just going to draw out a section that I'm going to stop, and I'm going to draw another line here for a belt. And I can add in a shape. I'll put in a little rectangle right now. All right, I'm going to do a little erasing right here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw it out pants. All right. Are these pants cuffed? 
you know, how are the shoes? What kind of shoes? I'm just gonna leave it alone like that. Maybe if they're jeans, so I'll put a little crease in them. All right. Uh, all I did for the pants, so this was the leg here, right? And this is the foot. I kind of figured out where I want the pants to go, how far out, where does it stop, and then I put like a little crease, a little light line into a crease of the pants. Now right now I got this little kid, um, if I wanted to I'd leave his hair bald, do whatever, but I'm going to make this a guy. I'm going to make this a guy, right? So I want to give him a little bit of hair, I want to think about the shape of the hair, so I'm going to come in and out right now. I know that this little like rectangle I made may not look great right now, but I'm using it as a guide. And a lot of the times in, in you know, manga anime, these kids have, or people in general, have a lot of like kind of spiky hair or just a lot of sharp angles to the hair. So I'm using this kind of as my guide where I'm going to start kind of coming in with the hair. And I'm going to spike this guy's hair until I get to the end. And I could erase this right here, right? And then I just come in and I add my spike in the middle kind of help define the hairline. And I got this little chibi guy. Give you guys a moment. Now, after you guys are done drawing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the reasons I, well, I love drawing cheap stuff, all right? Um, now, again, I do it for fun. I have a different, slightly different style. It's a little more, if you want to call it advanced cheap, it's still a big head character. You guys need a few more minutes? It looks like some people are still drawing, so I'm gonna give them a moment. Here, just checking in with the uh, stream. If anyone has any comments, I know I'm not really taking them today because I'm doing the workshop and focusing here, but I'm happy to, to take a couple if you guys have them. You have a question or a comment? That looks great. I can see that. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's very nice. <laughs> um, Now I'm going to show you why I like Chibi and what's awesome about drawing these quick, cutesy cartoon characters. Now remember I said, you know, it's just kind of the shape of the head and the, the cheek in whatever direction. And then the body is about, you know, to, from the, the body should be able to fit within the head. I can very simply curve that body, right? And now using those loops that I made for the for the arms and the legs, 
I now have a character who could be running, right? Can you see that? So it's just, it's a very simple, easy go-to. I could, again, do the head, right? Come around the head. And now maybe I have, I'm gonna lean the body this way, and now their hand is leaning up against the wall, right? And they could have their, uh, this would be their weight leg, let's say, right? And this leg is kind of maybe crossed or behind it. You see, so I can keep things very, very simple and easy to draw by going something simple like this. Um, you know, I'm just thinking of poses, you know? I mean, you could think of any pose, you know, what I like to do is, like I said, I look at people, I look at a lot of stuff, and I, I kind of use them as reference. So even if I was to like, like I'm looking at you right now, so sitting down there, you know, I know I'm going to need a table, right? If the table in, I can have your head, let's say this is you as a TV, right? Kind of right here. And now you let your, your body is here and you have one leg coming out like this and the other leg is right here, right? And then your arms are crossed on the table. So you see, I can even use, you don't have to have a seat, obviously, a little chair or something. But it's observation. So there's nothing wrong and nothing, no one says you can't get magazines, get pictures off the internet of people in poses and use them as reference. All right? I use reference all the time. You know, even when I'm drawing science fiction, you think, oh, I can make up stuff because it's all, you know, it's all done. But, but no, uh, I have to have vehicles kind of look like vehicles, right? So even if I'm not drawing a car, I'm drawing a flying car, it still has to look like some kind of vehicle that represents a car that people will recognize seeing, you know? Um, if I'm drawing a period piece, say Civil War, the clothing has to look like it comes from the Civil War. You know, I can't just put them in jeans and a t-shirt. So reference is important. Reference is always going to be key to stuff. All right, and the more you can observe in life, uh, you know, I'm gonna say right now, life drawing is always gonna be your best thing. So if you can actually observe someone doing stuff, that's perfect. But if not, that's why you have, they have books. I'm sure they have books here in the library on people in poses, you know, like for photography or whatever it is. Um, you could, Look up on the internet, find out what, wherever you can, you know? You know, when I was in college, I used to go to like coffee houses a lot, like Starbucks and places, and I'd sit down and just draw people. And it would help me with quick sketching, because if they're waiting in line or whatever, I'd draw very fast, just trying to capture poses. Um, like I said, my background's mostly in animation, so I'm about capturing the movement, capturing the gesture of what's going on. So speed in drawing is very important to me. Um, not because I like to draw fast, but because I like, when I draw um, a gesture, I want my, my goal is to capture the emotion. Uh, we can close a couple of windows. I open them because that fan would have been too loud to hear. Well, we got a couple of things open. Let's, let's, let me close a window for you. We've got, they're coming down that way and on there. So you can, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Can you keep it just a couple of those open for me? Yeah. It's very hot. <laughs> so if it gets too much for them, we'll do it, but it, it's very warm for me. So, what I want to do now is I want to I want to show you kind of a little bit more cheesy like characters, but it's a bit more advanced. It's about creating a detail. You know, a little bit more definement in the body. All right. So we can still use the same kind of head, although I tend to kind of flatten my head on top and I kind of push out a cheek in some form. Right. So I'll tend to do something like this. Also, what I do differently is I give my characters a neck. All right, 
So I'm going to add a neck kind of around closer to the back. And the body is going to be this kind of upside down triangular shape. So I'm going to go, I'm going to leave the outline very fast. I use a rectangle kind of where the waist belt would be, kind of a half circle. And then I keep out the legs. And his arms, actually, should probably be a little higher. And his arms. I want to show you the shapes that I'm using. Now, one of the things for those who missed yesterday, I'm going to write this on the board again. All right? His head's a little big for what I normally tend to draw, so I'm going to erase that and just shrink it down a bit. But this is basically how I create a character. This is almost mascot like drawing. I do this a lot. Um, okay. Now, one of the rules that you need to know is the elbows, elbows fall around the waist. Now, there are people who will tell you they fall at the waist, just above the waist. There's a lot of different disputes on that. I always say use the word around because as long as you're like by the waist, you're good, right? And then hands fall mid thigh. If you follow that rule, your characters will always be in proportion. All right? Now, we measure a character in head. Measure in head. And I'm going to just go through what I did the other day. So basically, um, the average person is about seven and a half heads high. A superhero is eight to nine heads high. Um, manga is about uh, six and a half to six and three quarters. Chibi is usually around two to three, depending on the type of chibi you're doing. And um, I'm going to call it cartoony. Like this is like um, Bugs Bunny and stuff. That's about three to five heads high. Okay, so if I was to look at this guy and I was measuring one, two, he's about three heads high, my guy. All right. When we look at characters that are well known, like SpongeBob. SpongeBob, I actually have to count. I haven't looked at him in a while, but I think he's about. I think he's he's like a technically a two head high character. He's his head is kind of. Yeah, I know, but I don't know the, the dimensions. I have to break it off, break it up uh, again. But like um, Bugs Bunny, right? Bugs Bunny is five heads high, but one head is his ears. You know, so his ears are actually an extra head. So that's kind of the pose, and I noticed I didn't do this here, but if you look, this is kind of broken off into a rectangle, and I just like to kind of puff out the sides. Um, the, oh, the, down by the caps, I mean. I like to fuck those out. Now, one of the reasons I like doing this is because I kind of have this mannequin here that I can work with now. And this mannequin, I can think about wherever there's a joint, I can rotate. All right? And I know the body rotates, too, in some form. So I can have some flexibility. So if I was to draw a head, right now, I'm just going to do this for the head. Right? And the other day we talked about the line of action. Line of action is like the spine. Think of it as the spine, how your characters turn. Okay? And I could use that shape for the body, but now I curve it in a direction, right? And now I can break off the legs. What is here? I can put this one coming like this. This, right? 
This could be like a really weird running pose. You know, the head will be here, the neck will be here, this arm. All right, this comes back, this is out over here. You see, now I got a guy running. Almost stumbling or falling in a way, too, right? So that line of action is very helpful to us. How far are we in? What time is it? Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I want to keep on track. <laughs> and if anyone needs, you know, at any time you guys can get up, use the bath and whatever, but around three o'clock in the halfway mark, I'll give you like five minutes if you need to. So. Let you guys finish kind of sketching, taking some notes. And I'm going to have you guys draw now in a moment. Okay, can I erase what's on the board? You guys still need it. Okay, I'll give you a moment. I could erase now? All right. No, who said no? You're still copying? Okay. I'm trying my best to do the second color. Well, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to have you guys draw your own stuff in a few moments. I'm going to fall around the waist. Like, why are you not? Why are you not? That's a nice piece. So here's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to start erasing a little bit. I know you guys are probably still drawing the character. I'm going to erase the notes. Um, and I'm just going to go over quickly kind of some poses with the line of action. Uh, now, I know you were out of the room, I think, when I discussed it. But the line of action is basically thinking of it like the spine of the character, how the body is twisted and turned. And you can see here this little line I drew going down through the head into this line of action. So I took this body that was straight at the moment. And I was able to curve it because I understand the body twists. And I was able to, and since I use rectangles and such, I'm able to break them up and know where the joints are so I can turn them into positions. All right? All right, I'm going to leave that one up because that is already a pose, right? And uh, okay. And what I'm going to do is what I like to do before I put the you know when I put the spine in is first I like to draw the head. I like to kind of think the direction the head is in, 
And even keeping it something simple like this could, we could twist the bottom, right? Simple. What if I had it like this and I put the head over here? Maybe you have a character bending over, right? Maybe it's trying to lift something. So you have the arms over here and the legs could be bent, you know, right? What if it's a superhero? Oh, superheroes, what do they do? They punch, right? So I'm going to use the line of action to show the direction more of the arm. You could twist the body. You could have multiple lines of action. So I have a body coming out like this. And if this arm is forward, this leg is forward, right? right. This leg is back. So you see how I got that there? Uh, it's, it, again, this is all through understanding and studying anatomy. The more you study it, the faster you'll be at it. You'll understand what goes where. Um, the gesture drawing for me, this is, this is basically what I do when I gesture draw. I sit and I figure out the pose just by looking at what that line helps me to find where the weight of the character is standing, the, the angle that they're standing. So one of the things is if the shoulders are in this direction, the hips are in the opposite direction. So I can automatically just do something like this, and I already know that my character is, twist, uh, is twisted in, the, in one direction, or it's like this, right? So understanding how the body and the hips move and things, because you have your head, right? Comes down, your neck there, your spine. You have your rib cage, right? Comes down to your pelvis, right? Off the pelvis, you have your hips, down to the knees, down to the feet. And off the rib cage here comes our shoulders, right? Right around the waist, pelvis area, comes down, your thigh. So understanding that, so this right here, that slants, this is really what we would use as our collarbone. So our collarbone is doing this, and this becomes our pelvis. And we could throw our rib cage. Oh, here's the rib cage, it's going like this right now, which means the stomach area is twisting in that direction, which would then bring the hips in like so. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So why don't you take a few minutes right now and try to come up either with your own poses, copy the poses that I put up there, think about a character you can draw, give them eyes, nose, hair, whatever you want to do. Put them in whatever clothing, boy, girl, doesn't matter. I'll, I'm going to come around in a few and uh, and, uh, you know, see where you're at, help you out if you need. I just want to give you a few minutes to get started. I'm going to take some of these books out again and put them on the table, okay? Okay. So let's think about let me back here for a second. Let's think about how to slant, right? So instead of just moving the head back, angle that body, right? Here's the waist. You see, and then we push the head back, we can even rotate the head a little bit. See now how it looks like his head is going backwards? So you can try something like that. Okay?
very nice. So while you guys are drawing, I just want to talk about some of the books I'm putting out here. These are all the library books. Uh, there's some books on this table here. I put some more books on this table. The books in front of you on this table here are very much um, instructional books, how to draw stuff. There's some, you know, actual comic stuff, but it's more about the how to draw on this table. These are more actual comic stuff. I also had these three DVDs. Superheroes, The Never-Ending Battle. This is a, I've watched this. This is a great DVD. The History of Comics, I've never watched, but it's Robert Kirkman who created The Walking Dead. I know of it. I hear it's a really good video. I do recommend it. If you're into comic strips, things like Garfield and, and uh, Calvin and Hobbes and all those things, this is my favorite. Stripped. This interviews comic strip artists who do things like the newspaper or online these days. It talks about the decline of the newspaper sales and stuff and how things are happening, but it's a very, um, very informative look at the industry. I'll say that. I don't know how many times I've, I've even shared this with my college students. Like I've shown it in my college class. It is such a great book. Uh, I mean, uh, DVD to watch. So, um, we come around and see more stuff. But I was flipping through a few of these the other day. And even something like this, it's a little different than how I'm showing you how to draw today. But sports poses are fantastic to learn to draw people in poses, like in action poses. Give me one second, I'll take your question one second. All right. I actually am not a sports fan, but I look at a lot of sports imagery. You know, like let's say I need to draw, I'm drawing like a caveman, so I need someone swinging a club. Look at a baseball player swinging a bat. You know, if I need someone, you know, flying, maybe I'm going to look at someone diving. You know, I'm going to be looking at sports images to help create the action poses. You want to learn how to draw a fight scene? Look at boxers, wrestlers, you know, MMA. You know, look into those poses. Get a good camera angle, copy the footage you can see. You know all the stuff just be writing cartoon ones. We're going to move on to something but in a few minutes, it's a little more advanced. But you know how to put people in poses through this. All right, now, hello, what's your question? That, what is that? Stained glass. Stained glass, and it's just like one. I love it. All right, I'm going to erase what's on the board. You guys are doing pretty good. Um, we're kind of at the three o'clock mark. It's five to three. If you guys need like five minutes to stretch, want to look through the books for a few minutes, go to the bathroom. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. There's some snacks right over there. If you want to grab something to chew on, you know, I'll give you a moment. I'll erase and I'll start setting up for the next stuff we're going to do. All right. Take a couple of minutes. There are drinks over there too. <laughs> You guys at home watching, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we're going to be taking a few minute break. This is a good time for you to use the bathroom too. Um, get a snack, do whatever. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll still be, this will still be up and running, but you're going to see nothing of interest for about five minutes or so. All right, guys.
I'm gonna come around and see that I can't see nothing back there. Come what the play game. Man. Talk so much you get thirsty, you know? Oh my god. That's feeling good over here. You know what that is. I've heard it, but I've never played it. It's crazy. And they have Russian power, and I'm figuring how can I take a Russian power and turn it into a super? Well, that's always a trick. That's what I was talking about yesterday. Was when you create a hero, what are we doing? What's its job? What's its abilities? What's its powers? Yeah, you know. it's just interesting. I'm reading it. And you know, they've got all these things, and you know, I think, gee, I could take that ridiculous thing from this game and re do it this, like a super suit, except for it would be like a whole, it would be like the, uh, it would be like, how would I say it? It would be like the giant, bulky thing mm -hmm. instead of uh, Iron Man. It would be like, it would be Iron. Iron thing. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be, you know, not quite the same as the original Iron Man suit. So yeah. It's kind of like Iron Thing. You yeah. look at it. You remember? Oh, you see that. The Iron Thing? Iron Man is original suit. Yeah, I know the Iron Man suit. Yeah. I love that suit. It's very blocky. And bulky. It's very blocky and bulky and. Not someone to not someone to to the moon that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's okay today. It? Yeah, it's still good. I'm enjoying it. Hope everyone else is. Yeah. Good. Maybe I'll. I don't think I'm better. The Mamba Crash Course books are really good. I like them a lot. So. I hope they come back. Oh, they will. They love their stuff. Okay. I think they're just going to the bathroom. Okay. I think I'll take a little snack too. What do we got here? Lunch berry, Cheetos, lamb crackers, and snacks. You look like. What do you like? Yeah, no, I'm just looking. I'm making the choices. We got some good stuff here. But I found one of my favorites. I'll take both. I don't know if I want to take both. Okay. <laughs> uh. You know, some other people promise, always, there's always people promise to come. Yeah, it's okay. Listen, I'm enjoying this. You know, if I have one person, 20 people, it's all the same to me. I'm having a lot of fun, enjoying it, and as long as they're getting the information out of it, I'm happy. Good. And that thing is three hours. I can not say it is a three hour movie on graffiti, that would be like. I'd be in shock if I had to watch it. No, but I it, but it's what people want around here. This is the drawing that I did. Oh, you can illustrate this? Yeah. Hold on, it's in my hand. <laughs> this is really fun. Wow. I like that. Is this, this is a uh, poetry book. Poetry book? Yeah. But that's like a King Arthur royal king type of thing, right? Yeah. Nice, I like the brown. Yeah, it's hard to put all the way in the Yeah. But I like yeah, it. It's, it's interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that thing. I know that thing. I don't know that, but I know the thing. That's how I started. When you think screen and drawing, you know, it's, it's, you know, I've thought about it with and all kinds of things. I never really took cartooning boards or anything, but I get an idea of what to do a little more than I had originally. And, and that's good to know because. You know, design is, is, is part of everyday life. Yeah. 
that thing is like the show the movement. Looks like it's easy, but it's not. It, it takes practice. It takes time to to learn. Once you understand anatomy, the movement gets a little better. Yeah, it's a little lighter, you know. So. Thank you. All right, we're going to begin in a moment. I'll let you guys get your stuff together and get back. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, with the facial features? Yeah. Was that helpful? Or? It was. It was. It really was. Yeah. And I like to do dolls. Mm -hmm. And I use expressions and things like that. So that was really good. Yeah. yeah. You can transfer that over into. Yeah. You know, when I, when I used to build puppets, you know, I'm sculpting a head. I have to sculpt the emotion. It's almost impossible unless you're building in catechins or raise eyebrows or do whatever, or a blank or something, that character's face is gonna look like that the rest of the time. So I'm sculpting. You have to understand even the movement and the feel of all that. And, and yeah. It helps, you know, when I was, you know, drawing and understanding the drawing, it helped me transfer into that because they think in 3D. But yeah, when you go to different mediums, sculpture or whatever, all this stuff can transfer over. It's just now you're thinking of it in solid form. And what are those shapes that we've been drawing? Like if I was to say we're gonna draw the muscle of an arm coming down, right here's the shoulder, right? And there's a muscle in the shoulder here. There's a muscle that comes and continues to go into the pecs. Then, you know, we got, what is this? Our, our tricep back here, our bicep comes in right over here, which connects into the elbow down here, which has its bone. And then we come into here. You know, and it comes down until you get to the wrist, that's right here, and then the hand comes in, right? So when we're looking at the muscles, what do all the, how do these muscles connect and build into the draw, you know? So now if you're sculpting it, it's now 3D. You know, and if you understand the shapes, that, oh, this is a sphere right here. This is a sphere here. This is a sphere right here, right? It helps you understand because then I'd be like, oh, well, this right here is kind of a cylindrical or a cone coming down that connects. And I understand that these 3D shapes come together to form. So I know what I'm sculpting. You know? Imagine if you're working with wood. What? Imagine if you're working with wood. Oh, wood is a lot because I'm not a big woodworker. You gotta get all the detail. Yeah. Yeah. Are you part of the cloth doll? Oh, yeah. They have a, they call it, uh, yeah, they had a big exhibit for a while. I mean, they do a lot of cloth dolls around here. And in the armory, there's a big, uh, there's a group that make, make quilts and, and dolls. Interesting. I didn't know that. All right, let's get started again. Um, we're going to go a little bit more advanced, more... Traditional, yes, you have a question? I will take a look, I'll be happy to. Okay, thank you. I like it. I would put like X's in his eyes or spirals in his eyes instead, because that looks like he's still awake. The spirals will make it look like it's kind of crazy and like kind of out of it, dizzy. Yeah. So now when we draw more traditional manga characters going into 
things like um, I'm always bad with the names and pronouncing. Like I think it's uh, like is it Shonen? 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 Is that, oh my Shonen, God! Shonen. Shonen. That's it. Shonen, Shonen that's the, that's is, is a from. is more of like a teenage, like tween teenage style, and. When we look into that style, there's a female style. I forget the name of it too. Sojo, Sojo yeah. So, so Shoin for the boys, Shoujo for the girls, and then there's even like adult themes. We're not going to talk about them today. But the drawings are very similar. Okay, um, the drawing. It's 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 the difference in those usually are the level of rating of what they can draw and what they draw. So obviously when you're adult, you're doing a little bit more R and above. But when you're in the like in the showing, you're like PG, PG 13, things like that. It's like tween teen stuff, right? And um, and a lot of stories specifically for the boys are more like action adventure. Um, sport. Yeah, sport. You can have it could be any, well, really any topic, but there's an adventure, there's humor to it, there's action going on. It's a little bit more. Um, um, if you want to call it like rough and tumble, you know how boys, you know, like that. When it comes to girls, it's a little more drama. It's a little more romance involved. Doesn't mean they don't have the other stuff. It's just their themes are a little bit more that that style. All right, um, and they all usually kind of include humor in some form. Uh, that's a big thing with 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 manga is the humor. All right, uh, I mean, I'm not saying they were getting all funny books, you know, but they like to add their humor into their stories. And when you read a manga, and we have a Pokemon book here. Now, these books, this is definitely more a kid-friendly book. Obviously, the books are read backwards, backwards to the front. Has anybody here ever read an actual manga? OK. So it took me a little bit to get used to reading manga. But you actually open the book at the back. And the balloons go from right to left. It's not the way we are. It takes a little bit. But I love reading manga. And I'll tell you why. It has nothing to do with the way it reads in, in, the, in the format. That took forever. Once I figured that out, I had no problem reading the book. What I like about it is I can sit down and read this book in, in an hour or less. Maybe a little longer and thicker, you know? They're meant to be quick reads. You're, they're meant to be, you know. Just read and I don't want to say toss aside, but move along to the next book in the, in the series. So they're fast reads. I love reading manga for that reason. I can sit down, pick up a book, and in an hour I'm done with it. You know, and then I'll go pick up the next one. You know, um, and I read a lot of different things, but I'm not like one of those guys who I want to sit and read like every manga that's out. I like characters that I know. So I've read like Star Wars manga. I've read. Um, like video game characters like The Legend of Zelda type of stuff. Things like that I tend to lean towards. I've read a few that are that are non like licensed characters that are actually um, you know Japanese you know stories that come here. And there's also a difference in their storytelling and the way they pace a story. You know, when we when we read American comics and we're looking at like superhero stuff, because that's mainstream, that's what people know. When we're reading those the stories, they kind of drag out, right? Um, you, you get a 32-page story that you pay five bucks for these days, maybe more, maybe a little less. And you, you know, it's serialized. You have to wait. The, the storytelling also has a different, it, it has a much different feel. When you read a, a manga, you know, it's almost like, you got the whole story in one book and that cliffhanger, yeah, you can wait until the next book comes out, but you got so much more information, you got more jokes in there, more action, more story. Um, and the pacing is incredibly different as well, which I, I like, and we could talk about that, but I wanna get more into the drawing right now. Um, so let's start off with the head. Now, <laughs> like I showed yesterday with the superheroes, Right? We have to understand how the human skull works. Right? So there's teeth at the top, on the top part of the skull, and there's teeth on the jaw. We have the nose right here, we have these big eye sockets. And if we're looking at the skull this way, it kind of comes like this. 
right? Eye socket and the nose is over. The nose is over right? So we use two, I, when I draw, I tend to use two different sections or two different shapes for the head. I use a circle for the skull, and then the jaw I change based on the type of character. Is he a strong character? Is she a soft character? What is, what is she? What is the shape I'm going to use? So if I come down over here, right, and I start with a circle for the head, right, I'm going to create a jawline. Now, in Mongo, they tend to have, they can have square, but they tend to be a little pointy towards the chin. And when I come down, I'm not going to come down far. I'm going to come down off the head. I'm going to create a shape like this. Right? And yesterday, I created a much bigger jaw than I did today. When I was doing the, the superheroes, it was a much bigger jaw. Right? So I have a shape that kind of looks now like this. We're going to focus on the head right now. Now, inside the head, we've got guidelines we're going to create, all right? So we have that line of symmetry we talked about, which mine looks terrible there, so I'm going to fix that. But I'm going to draw a slant, right? And then we have the eye line. Now, I'm going to put the eye line a little bit lower than halfway. Because the eye line in manga, they're usually a lot bigger eyes, so I, like, I tend to use a second level of eye line to give me a top and bottom. Right. So there's different types of eyes we can use. And this one is going to have a curve here at the top, curve at the bottom. Again, I'm going to use the same style eyes I used before. Okay. And I'll show you some different eyes in a moment. You know, I'm going to actually change my whole type a little bit. Okay. Let's go like this. There we go. No, that's a terrible eye. Let's not do that right now. It looks, sometimes they look nice, sometimes they, they don't look good when I'm drawing with marker here, you know? I'm just going to go simple. All right. So you can see I got these eyes here. I also got the eyebrows. Which remember they're a little thicker at the top, like towards the center of the forehead, and then they thin out as they get to the end. Let me just see. I got a couple of comments coming on over here. Oh, thank you, Sky Killer. I don't know who that is, but Sky Killer is liking what I'm doing, so thank you. I appreciate that. Um. Now with the nose. There's different ways to draw the nose, but they tend to have, at least the style I'm going with right now, tend to have a longer, you know, have a long kind of bridge in this, and it angles down. Now, I can put that at the other side, and that kind of tells me the direction the character is kind of facing a little bit, the direction the nose is going. I'm going to fix that though a little bit. Uh, so you can add a little nostril on the side or something. Right. And for the mouth, remember what I said about the mouth kind of not, um, not touching in the center? I'm going to add a very, you don't have to always do this, but I'm going to add a thin line with the bottom lip right there, something very tiny. Now, I will say this too, and I'm just going to, and these are just things to show and ideas to think about. You don't always have to have a nose that long. It's just something they tend to do. You could actually keep it short like that if you want to. So it's all a matter of opinion, feel, style. All right? The, uh, the ears attached to the head, just like 
in a regular, you know, human how when I was talking about how to connect kind of between the ear and uh, the eyes and the nose. I'll draw this on this side here. You want to be around the same side, same spot here. All right. And by the way, if you guys are into reading comics and collecting them regularly, I'm just going to give a shout out to the Spider's Web on Yonkers Avenue, across from yes. the casino. Best comic shop in Westchester, in my opinion. Paul's a great guy, and he's a good guy. They're all great over there. Yes? I've got this comic book. It was called Bobby. Uh huh, I know the book. Yeah, and I've read this other comic book from now. You guys can read it. It's called Super Episode. I don't know that one. Yeah, that's a good one. No, it's a good one. It's about a video game, but inside of a book. Oh, okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add character. Now, they will have, you could give your character some sideburns. They're going to come up. But what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to create like, almost like a little face mask. This is the character's hair on. All right? We'll make it right okay. Well, Mega Man is very big on anime. I love Mega Man. Actually, my that style I showed you earlier, it looks better on paper when I draw yeah. it on here. Um, but Mega Man is a big influence on how I draw my stuff. I just kind of bring, I bring a lot of American style into it because I still love American cartoons. But you know, it's funny. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, when I was a, when I was a kid, I, used to, I you know I grew up. I'm, I'm 45, so I grew up in the era of Voltron and Thundercats and Man, all those cartoons, right? And a lot of the cartoons that we watched were done in Japan or just overseas in general and had this anime influence to it, even if we didn't realize it. I learned to draw by recording those cartoons, pausing them, and drawing what I saw on the screen. So I didn't realize my whole style really did have like this anime manga influence growing up until I was in my early 20s and I started really like looking at my style um, so I copy out of comic books I did I did the whole I, how everybody works right um, and I remember I started getting out of like anime and manga early 90s right before the boom happened and all my friends who weren't into manga and anime when I was watching it all of a sudden became <laughs> this whole thing and they're like this is the thing you gotta watch and the best thing ever and I'm like yeah, I was kind of bad there because I was now studying like animation and things like that. I was focusing in different areas, but I always appreciated it, you know. Um, but it's just one of those things, you know. People need to. Uh... There's so many different rounds. It is. You so many. You're allowed to like whatever you want, you know. Yeah. That's what I always say. Like whatever you want. You know, I like a lot of different things. I have friends who will never look at manga or anime. I have people like if it's not manga or anime, it's not worth looking at, you know. So I look at it all. I love it all. Um, you know, I have my preferences of what I love. But so anyway, I'm keeping this hairline right now, and I did erase the head. But here's just something to know, right? Your hair is oh, like obviously I don't have it. So when I hit my head, I actually hit the scalp. So if I was to draw my character. To look like me, I would not add any hair. But anybody who has hair, if you touch your head, it's going to press down, and you're not actually going to feel your scalp. You're going to feel your hair on your scalp. So your hair is always going to go above the head. So if that's my headline right here, I know I'm going to go higher in the hair, right? Um, if this is kind of my hairline, then you know, like I said, they have a lot of sharp edges and points. Maybe I can use it to kind of come out here and create these shapes to kind of help create, you know, the build of the hair, you know? And you see, I'm just building out, out more and more in 
the style here. And I'm going to just kind of fudge it a little bit here. And the neck, because he's a young kid, would not go right to the edge, but kind of be in the center here, right? And I can even have some hair spiked out in the back. You see that? All I'm doing is I'm using the shapes, I'm building the shapes to create the look of the hair. You know? You just look in here. Thank you again. So now, again, I go much better on paper. If I had a document camera and I was shooting this, it, it looks, it'll look a thousand times better, but it's not that for what I have up on there right now. I'm much more of, the drawing standing up is a little weird for me all the time. I'm not used to standing up and drawing, you know? I was at a, I was at a table or something. And if I was to do a female, I'm gonna do that on the side here for you right now. I'm gonna probably have a much smaller head face type of thing. I'm even gonna angle her head out a little bit. I'm gonna put in her eye line. And then I'm gonna do the same kind of eyes. But remember, you get my lashes now. And oops. All right, the eyebrows again, the same way, ears. All right, I'm going to give her a cute little turned up nose right there. All right. And for her hair, just so you guys know, when I'm doing her hair, again, I'm thinking of shapes. So if she has bends, like a lot, they do that with a lot of characters, it's kind of, I'm going to kind of do a, uh, kind of do the staff circle to help start it off for me, right? And then I can come in and start cutting it up, adding some lines, and I can erase what I don't need, what's not gonna help me, and then I can build in her hair here, and build it off. I think there's some hair over on the side here. Build off, make her hair is cut off, and then she's got a ponytail that comes down. So you guys can play around with that. You know, and again, hairstyles, it's all a matter of observing. You can go on Pinterest, you can go just on a Google search and find manga hair or anime hair type in for boys or girls, and now you will see how they do it. And it's a matter of copying them. Um, if we look in the books, I think there's one here, even on the cover of this. Her hair is a little different than what I drew, but you can see that half circle shape on the top of her head here, right? Can you see that on the, on the book cover, that half circle? And then they just kind of drew out how they wanted that, that hair to be. It's all a matter of, you know, again, preference, a matter of what you're trying to draw, what you're trying to copy um, or trying to do. What's the movement like? This eye is terrible right there. I just got an infection, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'll do a better, better, hopefully a better one over here. This. You know, now I'll tell you right now, I'm drawing everything with the shapes. I don't do that a lot now that it's kind of second nature to me, right? A lot of these things I've either combined in shapes together, I just skip. But again, that comes with years and years of experience. When you are learning, these shapes are key to help you understand where things go and how big to make them, right? But when you're, when once you reach a certain point, a lot of this will skip. Now, I don't skip it completely. In drawing, before I do an actual drawing of a character, like a finished piece, we have what we call the underdrawing in art. The underdrawing is basically a skeleton, and it's the building blocks. 
And I sometimes, I will sometimes even start a character kind of like this, and here's just kind of the body, and here I am, and here's the leg, and coming out like that, and that leg's here. And right here, this is my underdrawing, it's my skeleton. Maybe they have like a bat they're holding or something, right? Or some kind of sword. So I got this really messy, quick sketch. Then what I do is I kind of build up on shapes and I start defining. Okay? And when I start defining, I'm like, is this a boy or a girl? Is it, how old are they? You know, whatever, usually I know that before. You know, but, you know, let's say this is a girl and her hair is blowing in the wind that direction. I need to know the hair is blowing like that. And then I can come in and start forming the hips, right? And get that piece in there. And oh, there's the knee. I'm just kind of shaping the leg now. There's the foot, and you can see that. And I can go in and lightly erase if I need to, right? And then I can go next step and start building up the muscles a little bit in there and so forth. That's the process I use. Oh, got my back. Let me see, got a few more. All right. So let's now talk about actually the body of these characters. All right. So I'm not going to draw the heads anymore. I'll put a head just so you know you have a body. Now, a lot of the stuff they do, um, you know, the men even are very thin. They have kind of this, you know, feminine. I don't, I don't like to use that term for them because they're not usually that way. But when they're teens, they're kind of. You know, you, you can really only tell by hairstyle and dress if they're a boy or a girl, <laughs> right? Um, so if you got the head right here, right, and here's the chin. I'm going to draw that line of action. And just like yesterday, I'm going to have a rib cage. And you can do this either with rib cage or no rib cage. You can just do it as a solid shape. And then I come in for the pelvis. Right? And I can connect here. The shoulders are both are the spheres with cylinders or the, <coughs> the arms. Right? Right? And I think I made this a little too big. I don't think we'll fit all the legs in there. Right? The leg's gonna come down, and I'll draw the leg over here. So legs going to attach to the body over here. It's going to have a, a knee, and then it's going to have a cylindrical shape that comes down into the foot. Now I tend to, when I draw my my legs, um, you'll notice I have a little bump at the bottom. Not every artist does that. That's kind of a, a technique to me because if we were to actually look at an angle. Right, the ankle on the body will come down here, it'll come out on the side, right? And you gotta think of the ankle as a joint, right? It has a pivot point. So the foot is actually attached to, to that right there. You see, so I always kind of put that little bump inside because it shows me where it's, the foot is actually attached. You guys don't have to do it, I'm just showing this is, this is a style and technique that I, I came up with, or maybe I saw somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> but it's something I've been doing for a while, all right? And then once you have, then once you have the body in, right, um, that's like how we close the cheeky characters, what we're going to do is how we're going to close this character. Now, this is a male's body. The difference is basically the same thing between a male and a female as in yesterday. Uh, females have smaller shoulders, wider hips. All right? So if I come in here, so the, the rib cage is going to be smaller on a woman, but her hips are going to be larger. And 
kind of made the picture for the legs really bad here, but that's what it is right now. Thin that one out right there. Okay. And then to draw, just like I did yesterday, um, how to find the breast, you can either put it, I, I do it two ways. One, I either put an X at the, in the middle of the neck, and I come out with a shape, a kind of round and triangle, right? This way I know they're there. Or if you understand the muscle in the arm, how I explain how the muscle in the shoulder from the, the goes into the pectorials over here, that's all it is. So if I have the body like this, and I have a shoulder here, I can know that they're going to come off like that. Okay? So either way, whatever works for you. So we got about 30 minutes left, guys. What I'm, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is, now that you've seen kind of the construction of a person, and you understand from how we put clothing on the chibi and how we built hair, I want you to try to come up with your own design of a character. Um, if you want to come up and take a book to look through to kind of come up with ideas. Now, not all of these have manga style in here. So if you want to do something non-manga, that's fine. Um, remember, this is a cartooning workshop. Today I'm focusing on manga, but it's any form of cartooning that you're interested in. So if you guys want to look at some cool stuff, we got old Flash Gordon, old Terry and the Pirates there, Prince Valiant, we got some DC Super Friends, My Little Pony, Pokemon Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, here, I'll let me bring that over to you. Thank you. You're very welcome. I just want to see something really quick. <laughs> I'd have to look around. I know some of the I know exactly. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> now here's a manga for intermediate. Who's this one here? You're doing great, Dad. Mm -hmm. Wow. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. Quick, can you can you let them know that this is from a grant from our class tester and there was an on called public library? Absolutely. So uh this this actually grant came from uh the Arts Westchester. And uh, I'm sorry, what was the second part you said? Um, and then we're at the Mount Vernon Public Library. Yes, we're at the Mount Vernon. I said that in the beginning of the show, but I'll remind you guys. Uh, this actually, um, I'm getting to do these workshops, which, by the way, I'm going to have one on Monday. It's is Monday the 8th? Monday the 8th. 8th and the Wednesday the 10th. We're going to have two more. Uh, they're from 4 to 6 here at the Mount Vernon Public Library in Mount Vernon, New York. And uh, it was made possible with a grant from the Arts Westchester. Yeah, so, yes, and they were, uh, this is fantastic. I love doing this stuff. I'm actually going to be doing five more in December here. Maybe we'll live stream one or two of them. So uh, I, don't, I don't remember the dates in December, but we have them written down. Yes, and uh, we'll be posting and uh, about that. You can follow me, you guys, on my social media, which is just my name, Michael Gracia. Um, you can, uh, let me see, do I have something you can find me on here? Yeah, here you go. Whoops, actually, hold on. Let me. It, it, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, hold on, I got someone else's info, info on here as well. So um, let me just save this here. So yes, got my website, michaelgracia.com. My Facebook, at Michael Gracia Studios. Getintune.net on Facebook with T O O N. Uh, my Instagram, face, uh, Twitter, and YouTube is just my name, Michael Gracia. All right. Um, for you guys at home and scrolling across the bottom, feel free to add me. Uh, watch what I'm doing. 
there will be more educational cartooning coming from my YouTube channel. So, oh, did you uh, want? I'll get you one of those. And for you guys at home, if you go to getintune.net, you can download free bookmarks, print them up on card so I can get two of them. Uh, no, uh, but it's uh, similar. Oh, I don't want to say similar. It's, it's not similar sound. It's actually, uh, it has a few different meanings across here. We don't know exactly where I'm going to We have a few ideas. So if you want to look, that's a pretty good manga book. Um, here's another one. That, that's more beginner, I think. This is intermediate, which shouldn't be too difficult for you. Um, yeah. I can't see it. All right. Let me see you guys. You're going to work on your own characters and your stuff right now. I like that. And then when you're done, erase the extra pieces you don't need. All right. I'm going to erase what's on the board here, and I'm going to probably just do a quick sketch. Well, you guys are doing it. Now, by the way, tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday, when we do this workshop, I think I'm going to focus more on actual storytelling and focus on the storytelling comics and why it's important, how we put everything we've been learning the last three days together into a uh, narrative. In that, exactly, into a narrative. We'll, to, we'll probably focus more on a comic strip, do something like three, four panels just to get the basic understanding, but then we'll, you know, branch off if we can. Now, just so you guys know, if you ever check out my work and see my style, my style of superheroes kind of has a little bit of an anime influence in it, but it's really, um, I keep it very simple. Yesterday I was mentioning artists like Alex Toth, who created characters for Hanna-Barbera, like Dragon Quest and Space Ghost and all those type of characters. Um, but I probably think I'm mostly influenced these days from my childhood, you know, uh, Bruce Tim from Batman the Animated Series and all that type of stuff. So I keep it very simplistic in my mind. Well, I'll leave that up for now. Hmm. Oh, that's my hand sanitizer, not my water.
Yes. Oh, if you have those anime, I think it was called <coughs> The Bronx Memory Yeah. I've heard it, I've never watched it. I've seen it, I've actually seen it as a manga, I've seen the book. Yeah, I've, I've been watching it. Um, I forgot what it was called, the app was called, but I did watch it on there and it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a good kid friendly one, I believe. Um, was it from it? Was it not kid friendly? I thought it was. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. You like it? 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 Okay, they come out easily. You can take this too. Right? They can take the sketch pads? Yes, yes. There's a dollar fifty nine, they're not gonna kill us. <laughs> Something here on my phone while you guys are doing that. I'll come around again in a moment. Oh, when that happens. I'll just talk about this real quick. shapes. Once you study the shapes, once you know them, you could draw, you literally can draw anything. The, uh, the One of the tricks to cartooning is training your eye, at least this is how I, I like to think of it, to see the shapes and not the object that you're looking at. Like my hand sanitizer bottle here, right? If I was to hold it up, the major shape, and I'm thinking in 3D now, not in 2D, not the flash shape, it's a box. It's a 3D box, right? And then I got a cylinder right on top. So if I was to think in 3D, right, and I was to say, okay, look, I got this 
box right here. I got the cylinder right on top, and boom. Yeah, you can say that it's that, but now I can come in and I can edit and curve out the shapes here that I need, curve in here, figure it out, right? I can do curves, I can add another line for the cap where you know you can flip it open, maybe add the details in the line there. You know, you guys have a water bottle, right? What the overall shape of a water bottle is what? You got a cylinder, right, that attaches to a sphere that attaches to another cylinder, right? I can come in and place the label area, do some lines, add some bumps, right? Even maybe add a bump or two up here, right? It's a pull and spring ball. It's thinking about the shapes that make up the objects rather than looking at the objects and saying, how do I draw that? If you could break it down into its most simplest form, which is a shape, you could draw. So it's about training your eye. Now, when people talk that they have talent in art, you know, you pick up, you know, talent is, is a natural ability, right? Some people can pick up a paintbrush and understand automatically how the techniques work. But I think for a lot of people, it's they have that eye. They understand. They can see what other people are doing and use their hand to recreate it. But art is a skill. It's, it's self-taught. Everything I've done up here today has been a demonstration. I've, show, I've basically guided you. And you can understand everything I did. But until you guys put it into practice, it, it, it's useless to you. I mean, it's great that you understand, but I mean, to actually put it into practice, you don't know how to do it. Art really is a self-taught, you know, piece. Uh, uh, you know, like, I don't want to call it skill. Let's call it that. It's a self-taught skill. So the more time you put into it, the more you guys practice, that's what you're going to take out of it. The more you, time, you know, you go home and you say, I'm going to pull out a blender today and I'm going to draw the blender. And then later I'm going to go sit in front of my toilet and draw my toilet. What shapes make up my toilet? You know, and you do that. And then all of a sudden, you'll know, hey, I want to draw a toilet. Well, it's got a cylinder for the seat, right? It's got a sphere right here. It's got a little box, right? The tank is a box, right, with another lid on top. And the plunger that you flush, you press the flush, is a cylinder with a box on it. All of a sudden, boom, I know, I'm going to add another one up here. I'm going to look at the blender, right? What shape of the blender? A bunch of different shapes, right? A box, a cylinder. Another cylinder, another cylinder on top. Maybe it's got a thing open here. Maybe it's an old school one with a handle, you know? So it's just, what are these things that you're drawing? What are the shapes that make this stuff up? So today, like I said, we focused on manga. Manga is a specific style of cartooning. All right? Yesterday we did superheroes. That's a specific style. The day before, we just did basic skills, and I talked about kind of a generic overview of stuff. Everything that you do, though, and everything I talked about, and the ones that have been here for the last few days, will tell you everything I did was shapes. That's it. All I did was show you how to put shapes together. And that's what cartooning is. It's stylizing the world in a simple form. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's lots of other thought processes on there. Other people will have different perspectives and thoughts on there. You read another book, you see another guy talk, you know, you watch a YouTube video, somebody else may tell you something completely different. But a cartoon in general, that term cartoon is, is, is basically a funny drawing, a funny picture, which by the way, manga loosely translates to, if I remember correctly, humorous illustration or humor drawing, you know? Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's really just train your eye and, you know, go home, draw stuff. All right, you have a question for me? Wow, it was a really nice pinky pie with the Twilight Sparkle. You did a great job. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot. I've, I've, 
Let me see where are we at in time. So we got about nine minutes left before we end the day. Um, are there any questions before we wrap up that I haven't done that you want me to demo real quick? Uh, I have questions on anything I've done. You want to look through the books over here and ask me questions about them? I'm happy to answer anything. Just before we go, I have a time You can put down whatever name of contact you would like to give. And you know how it's good to or just write it in the dental. I mean, just, we just need it for to show we we had some people, and hopefully the, the uh, it would be nice if we can get the count of how many people watched this today. That would be. I will let you know. Uh, better if I do it after twenty four hours. Yeah, after twenty four hours, we'll have yeah. a count, and that'll, they'll probably be very happy with that. But they probably. Yeah. Just, I haven't seen that very much. <laughs> so, please take into account that people didn't know about this until today. Like no, I, I understand that. And just remember, Monday from 4 to 6, I'll be here and we're going to focus on, on storytelling and how basically making comics work. And the idea of panel, I don't like the word sequential, but people use it as sequential art. Sequential. Panel, panel, panel progression. Anyway, yeah. All kinds of ways. Um, not only sequential, it's just they train the art. Yeah. They train one thing to happen. So I'm going to wrap up the, the stream right now so we can, you know, chat a little bit, you guys. So you guys, thanks again, everyone who tuned in. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I'm going to be wrapping up with the people in, in you know, here who are here live. Uh, maybe I'll stream Mondays. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And... Um, yeah, thanks to you. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you're in the Westchester, New York area on Monday from four to six, I'll be here at the Mount Vernon Library in Mount Vernon. We're going to be doing comics, like basically storytelling for comics. And then Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, we'll have my last cartoon day and I'll be here in December as well again doing all this. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Check me out Tuesday night for my regular time at 8.30 p.m. Eastern when I interview J.D. Calderon of uh, the Oswald Chronicles, who has his Kickstarter up right now. All right, guys, I'll see you guys later. Bye.